Welcome back. Remember the hashtag to use is hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday at y 2 for channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. The conversation that we are having at this particular segment is the aftermath of COVID uh, teenage pre pregnancy. Pre pregnancy. So uh, as I had introduced uh, um, the co-founder of Krita Touch the Needy, uh, Mr. Abdul Ali Hussein. So I'll let him introduce himself again because I know you guys didn't hear him clearly initially. So... Yes, Abdul, this is your this is your time. Okay, thanks so much. <laughs> uh, I'm Abdul Ali Hussein, uh, Jina Mtaani na Julika na kama Mr. Pads, uh, born and raised in Kibra. Nimesomea primary Shadrach Kimalel. Nikaenda Mwingi High School Ukabani, mm -hmm. but nikamaliza jua football, nikamalizia career shule, nikamalizia shule Kamkunji High School because nilikuwa nacheza bola. So nime mimi nime natoka kibra kibra ndio nyumbani kibra ndio ndio tao ndio ushago ama nubian na nimelelewa pale and i know everything yani tangu hizo for the past 35 mm -hmm. years nimekuwa pale kuna zile vitu nimelearn na challenges zile tuko nazo pale kwa mtaa so me sizi si, i don't call them problem i call mm -hmm. them challenges mm -hmm. because uh, we need to overcome it very true absolutely yeah. i agree with you so that is your hood so uh, when did the the passion to just give back to community where did, where did it all begin ilianzia wapi a passion to give back to the community ilianzia in fact uh, when i was growing up uh, my mom used to help the girls with the sanitary towels so nimekuwa nikiona and uh, in our family we are just two me and my brother we don't have sister so ile sister love mm -hmm. uh, we didn't get it so much so niliona my mama kijaribu kusaidia watoto wasichana hiyo time za kitambo 90s 2000 so pia nili grow a passion nikakuwa nataka kujua what is uh, that important uh, kuhusu girl child so after finishing my high school nika nika join NYS nika savuko after finishing NOS, nika join... Eh, umekua NOS, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nika serve NOS for two years. Mm -hmm. After finishing there, nika join KWS for five years. Oh my goodness. Mm. So after join KWS for five years, nikienda, nikirudi, napata tu. Eh, ukirudi mm. mta, mta, tu iko vile... Oh, the way you left it. So, nika bidi, ni, ni wache, nika kuja home. Mm. Nika kwa na passion to the community. Lakini ile kitu pia nashukuru ke KWS au ndo okay. at least wali nipeleka course nikafanya course kuhusu community development mm -hmm. so nikakuwa nafanya mentorship program side za voi cost so ile hiyo shughuli nikabidi nikakuja nikaanzisha mtaa pale okay. so from 2010 mm -hmm. nikarudi mtaa kurudi mtaa so nikapata group nika join so we had tulikuwa na group ilikuwa inajiita Kibira Lindi Youth Organization Tumekuwa tukirani pale na after pale nikapata pia position ya kuwa leader pale. Lakini due to eh, development za mtaa, so kuka kwa na barabara ikakuja bypass. Saizi inaitua bypass, inatoka yaya, inapita hivu ikienda mbaka langata, rongai. Ikapita na ile organization yetu. So kupita na ayo, tukakuwa tuna space ingine. So na wale eh, youth tulikuwa na wakamua, tulikuwa na, tulikuwa tume save some million kadha. Mm -hmm. Lakini waka mwatu gawane. So to me, nika filile kugawana ikuwa the right decision. Lakini uh, I, I didn't have that chance ya kuzuia. So ili bidi tugawane do. After kugawana, so I had to go and start my so uh, initiative start and continue doing the community work. Mm -hmm. So even though <coughs> after there, 2017, do Kirta tulianzisha. Na from that time, tukakuwa tunafanya tu mentorship to the youth, uh, mentorship to the boy child, uh, Girl, boy, girl child na boy child mm -hmm. lakini my passion sana inakuwa kwa girl child because na feel nikiongea na wao na jaribu kutoa ile period shame mama nikiongea na wao uh, because the word menstruation inaanza na men mm -hmm. inamaanisha sisi kama men mm -hmm. we need to be part of the process so hiyo ndio nimekuwa nikifanya so that's uh, that brings about the the title of you being a menstrual champion because yeah, yeah. you actually yeah, yeah. Uh, help out the girl child when yeah. it comes to uh, sanitary towels i yeah. believe that's where the name mr pads came from yeah, as well yeah, that's where the name is uh, so here it is the the initial organization has splitted and then uh, that's when you co-founded the creator touch the, uh, yeah. the needy. Yeah, yeah. So when uh, when it comes to the conversation of the day, we are looking at the aftermath of the COVID teenage pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, let's start from uh, 
from where you're seated and you've interacted with so many uh, young mothers, mm -hmm. uh, especially after COVID-19, Shule Zikafungu in a time frame of uh, around nine months. nine months. So for you uh, looking or even interacting with these young mothers, what would you say is like, what the problem is? Is it the, the, is it the fact that the mothers, the teachers, or is it poverty? What is the problem when it comes to the situation whereby and I do interact now as Chana, like, ukisikia stories, story yao, wanasema shida ni wapi, what led them to be in that situation? Uh, the problem is, to me, is the, the up, uh, upbringing, yani venyo melelewa pale home, mm -hmm. na, ni, ni different na venya situ melelewa. Uh, ukifa, ukipa, uki, ukiangalia time yetu, uliko nalelewa ama muslim, uliko napata weekend, uh, lazima, uliko naenda shule lakini wana weekend lazima wende madrasa mm -hmm. uh, christian uliko na saturday kama labda when you are 7th day utapata family yote inaenda church na wazazi uh, sunday the same thing so ilikuwa watu walikuwa na believe sana in god so nadhani ile kutoka kwa ile kuacha mambo ya god pia imechangia sana people uh, family ya mobs imekuwa wanataka tu vitu za dunia tu mimi naweza sema we are running up yani ile umeka job mbele sana unasahau god na unasahau ule mto ipi anafalelewe na 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 nini na na, na maadili ya kidini so that is one of the key thing ile pia naona because watu wa saizi hawana ile haya mm -hmm. kitambo sisi uliko napata saizi kuna zile vitu i am doing siwezi do mbele ya parent wangu kuna zile ngona unaweza pata msichana anavaa time zetu huko unaweza vaa mbele ya parent wako so hiyo ni naweza sema hiyo ni one of the key thing na pia kenye mechangia pale ni ghetto pale ni capital city vitu zina change eh, technology zimeingia vitu kama hizo so hiyo ndio naweza sema ime led to one of the thing that uh, the girl child and engaging in different uh, in different things the other thing pia naweza sema ni ile eh, maadili ya pale home unapata the parents are too busy they are working to cater for a uh, basic, basic need, need shelter food the wanasawile love ukiangalia kasi kitambo uko kikula sisi ungeza kukula without dada ko pale mama ko pale lakini saa hizi hizo ni vitu haziapen mm -hmm. mtu yeye anachukua food yake anaenda kula pale nje parent hata ajui the challenges lakini sisi kitambo unaweza pata ukikula pale kwa kwa, kwa table na parent wako parent wako akikuangalia face hivi anajua eh huyu akona problem lakini saa hizi parent ya yani ile mzazi na mtoto kuangaliana kujuana ile oh, we bond. are too busy yeah there's no that bond okay. we are too busy yani wewe umeamka kwenda work wewe umelipa ume school fees ujui kama wewe mtoi mwenyewe amefika ile shule ama amesoma homo amefanya so hiyo ndio one of the thing mimi naweza sema the, the, the biggest uh, challenge ile tuna face hawa tu wasichana hasa hasa wamekosa ile love okay. and when they, they lack that love pale home kuna mafisi wako pale nje wanaweza ufa ile love or oh, in terms of soliciting for uh, for sexual favors yeah 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 okay, uh, okay. I, uh, I also read there's a documentary that was uh, made by bbc and it's in africa in general and that was like one of the key issues so would you say that sexual education should be incorporated probably in the religious uh, a platform even uh, teenage you know gatherings yeah to me uh, to me as a will that help yeah, to me, as I say, it's very important because you, one of the one of the challenges we are facing, Ukiangalia, even me now, uh, championing issue of menstruation, uh, in still in some areas, some religions, there is still a taboo. Mm -hmm. There's a big uh, taboo there, men talking about uh, menstruation. So uh, women take it as their own issue, uh, and men we don't want to engage because we know it is a women issue. So that is one of the challenge. So to me, it needed to be in churches, mm -hmm. uh, in mosque and school, uh, and it will help a lot. And that is one of the things that I'm championship, uh, because I'm, I'm moving around to the churches, to the schools, mm -hmm. uh, at least to talk to the religious leaders, the issue of, uh, the importance of uh, talking about the issue of menstruation, mm -hmm. at least to help the, our girls and remove that stigma. Right. So, yeah. Uh, and also, I would like to find out in the situation whereby I believe during the lockdown, mm. uh, we have our, chil our children were with uh, you know their the relatives, probably even their biological father, and they got violated during that time as well. Yeah. That those cases. So uh, when it comes to the program that you run, uh, 
take us to so when it comes to dealing with trauma because this is a kid that uh, is expected to go and report in the police station go mm. take a p3 go to uh, gender based violence center so when do you take them through that during that uh, uh, the program and how do you help when it comes to the program that you guys run that helps uh, the teenage pregnant te the teenage pregnant mothers that is yeah, yeah. We take them, it depends with the, the issue and the, maybe the problem that the, the girl is facing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the family, how the, the family is cooperating, how the family has uh, taken that issue. So for us, if, if the family cooperates, it becomes so easy. But you will find that some, in, because in, in the program of our young mothers, you will find that uh, some young mothers, they were raped. And uh, the parent uh, didn't cooperate that time. So for us, it becomes difficulty. Maybe the the person who, who raped the, the young mother, uh, didn't, uh, he went back there and talked to the, to the family and give something small. Oh. So the family don't want to talk about uh, that problem. So that is one of the challenges we are facing. But uh, if the family cooperate, uh, our organization, we cooperate with other organizations that maybe deal with the gender-based violence, at least to help in the issue of rapes, things like that. So for us, it become easy when the parents cooperate. cooperate. But if, uh, when the parents doesn't cooperate, it becomes difficult because for you, you will try to find justice for the girl. But at the back there, uh, the perpetrator go and talk to the family, maybe remove something small, maybe 10K or even 20K, so the family cannot talk about the issue. So mm -hmm. it becomes a challenge. Mm -hmm. And the issue of rape, you know, it, it takes uh, one of the biggest challenges we are facing now is the government take the, the issue, you need to go for uh, medicals, checkups, uh, check things like that. So it takes too long maybe. Because even for us, we have uh, like five cases since 2019 up to now. Uh, we are, the girls have not uh, get the uh, justice. So that is one of the challenges we are facing there in Kibra. And it is happening on a daily basis. The way you are saying uh, a girl being raped by an uncle, uh, uh, a father, things like that happening grandfather so one of the biggest challenge we are facing is uh, getting the justice so to me it will be even easier for the government at least to intervene and to come with a mechanism that uh, the, uh, the girls can get uh, justice uh, in in due time uh, not uh, just to prolong the case for for long uh, you begin going to court every uh, every after maybe three months things like that so that is one of the challenges we are facing there. So, but we are trying. We are trying our best. Uh, and in our center, for them, first to, to, is to give them hope mm -hmm. and uh, to show them it's not end of their life. Because for us, we are called them, they are our champions because maybe they were impregnated and they decided to keep the, the baby. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, we do maybe mentorship program, uh, uh, mental health okay. pro, uh, at least to talk to them to give them hope and uh, our main focus is for them is after giving birth how they can go back to school or if you, mm -hmm. if you don't want to go back to school how you can do a course that it, yeah, it will help you training, yeah. Yeah, yeah just to be embraced back in the society yeah, yeah. i speak about hope and uh, the mentorship program that you run so what type of, what type of uh, mentorship do you give to these young mothers and also in uh, i'd like you to touch on also the mental health aspect because these are people who have gone through trauma yeah, this yeah. is a child bringing a child into the world so yeah, yeah. Uh, let's look at the mentorship programs that you offer and also uh, uh, when it comes to the psychological part of it um how do you go about it uh, for us, uh, for us, we in our center we we also invite uh, well wishers who can maybe a psychologist can come there, talk to them. We uh, f last uh, last year we had a a program from one of organ on organization called Ginko, and Ginko were there. They helped the girls for the three months, the young mothers for the three months, uh, at least to take them in different uh, uh, mental health uh, courses talk to them at least one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, at least to know their challenges. Because one of the biggest problems we, we are facing, every girl they have, they, they have same problem, mm -hmm. but uh, tackling the, the issue is differently. It depends with the background of, their, of the family. So you need to, to deal with every girl in, on his own way. Because some you will find them, the problem is there at the home. Mm -hmm. Some of them you will find them, the problem is just around the, the 
the neighborhood. The area, the neighborhood. Yes. Some of them, the problem is in school. So you need to, to tackle and see. So for us, we invite uh, at least uh, those who are uh, those people who have those um, experience of talking to the psychologists who can come and talk to them mm -hmm. and uh, they have help us. And uh, the, the one of the good things, the psychologists uh, also come from Kibra. Okay. So yeah. And so they work on a pro bono? Yeah. They work on a pro bono? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we try to help them. And at least it has helped them since uh, last year um, until now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen a, a lot of uh, improvement and, uh, and their girls can now open up. Some of them came out at the center. They were not talking. Mm, they were not opening Some, up. Yeah, okay. they were not opening up. Uh, some of them uh, open up, up after giving birth, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Uh, in the time frame of uh, when you all began uh, the Young Mothers, it's called Young Mothers, the program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from, uh, that was after COVID-19. Yeah, after COVID-19. In yeah. that time frame, how many uh, Young Mothers have passed through your hands and the organization? Uh, through our hands and organization, we have more than 60 Young Mothers. Okay. Yeah, in different areas from Kibra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, some of them who have gone back to school. Uh, and, and our young mother, the, 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 our youngest um, young mother, she's 13 years old. Oh she's in class seven, mm -hmm. and she has given birth and go back to school. Okay. She'll, uh, she'll be sitting an uh, exam this year. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, speaking about going back to the school, and uh, I'd like us to look at the stigma side of it. Yeah. So uh, the way, what is, from where you're seated and how you talk to them, how do you explain uh, the way forward when getting teen mothers back to school, generally because also for the sake of our viewers who yeah. are watching. So uh, mentally, how do you prepare them? Uh, first, uh, we <coughs> first we prepare them by talking to them and then giving them hope and uh, at least, uh, first for, uh, for them, they need to believe in themselves, and uh, maybe getting pregnant or giving birth is not end of life. So we did that for three months, and then after that, uh, we in, we also engage the family, and we also engage the we go to the school and engage the teachers mm -hmm. because you know in school there we have uh, some of the students who maybe will be talking bad about you, you getting pregnant things like that. So that is one of the key things that we focus, uh, at least to talk to them and give them hope and uh, build their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Because uh, most of the girls uh, in our area, the biggest challenge they are facing is they, they have low self-esteem. And that's where a lot of boys take advantage of, of that. Mm -hmm. So for us, the main issue we are doing is to build that self-esteem. When your self-esteem is high, you can talk, you can speak it out. Yeah, you can face you are now a mother and you can still go back to school. It's not end of life, mm -hmm. things like that. And it has uh, really worked for us because some of them have gone back to school. Some of them are now doing some uh, courses, beauty, things like that. Some of them are engaging in business. At least they can make uh, their own income. Okay, and yeah. for just the, the people who always, uh, uh, I'd like to look at it from an angle of the society now, from just uh, being incorporated in uh, uh, stigma-free institution, educational institution, yeah. let's look at the, the now the society. So how can the society effectively uh, deal with teenage pregnancy and not just, you know, pinpointing fingers at them and just murmuring down? Because that, as well, you've mentioned the issue of uh, self-esteem. Yeah. That affects them. So how can us as a society change the whole narrative? Uh, the way you can change the whole narrative, I think it, it, it will all start at, uh, at their home base there, the parents. Mm -hmm. That is one of the challenges we are facing because uh, you'll find out that if the girl get, uh, maybe the, the, uh, the teenage girl get, uh, got pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, one of the challenges we are facing, you'll find that the parent hide uh, they had the they hide the pregnancy. Oh, okay. They don't want to talk about it. Uh -huh. So maybe maybe after five six months when the the stomach start growing big, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that is when they will start talking about it. But they uh, they they also you'll find that if the, uh, some of the girls who, who got pregnant, uh, when the parents uh, knew about the the pregnancy, they don't talk. They are living in the same house, but then they are mm -hmm. not talking. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the uh, key thing. Uh, the community and the parents need to embrace uh, for those young mothers, maybe or the teenage girl, teenage girls who got pregnant. We need to accept the fact that uh, it has happened, and we need to to show them love and to show them 
how to at least to show them how they will carry the baby for the nine months and now they are going in, in another journey of being a mother mm -hmm. uh, despite you being a uh, young mm -hmm. you already going to be a mother mm -hmm. because uh, at 13 age at 13 years you find a, a baby having a baby mm -hmm. that is one of the biggest pro, uh, challenge we are facing so for me it's for communities uh, for the parents to embrace that uh, it has already happened so how how can we handle the, the situation it. and go about it and uh, the other thing is how can we help uh, other the other teenage girls to not engage into sex and get uh, pregnant. I'm right, speaking about just uh, trying to help other girls who and just to avoid the situation whereby they become mothers at a young age. Mm. What would you say a couple of risk factors for a teenage mother? Uh, to me a couple of risk factors we are facing. Uh, one of the things that we f for now we need to to agree with the, uh, the young teenage girls they engage into sex. Mm -hmm. That is one of the key things. Even me when going out talking to them that is one of the things we cannot do away with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, for us, it's just uh, to talk them, uh, the child, and the, maybe the consequences they will face of after having sex. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is one of the challenges. Understanding their yeah, understanding as well. Understanding them, yeah, w as well. Because w uh, you'll find a lot of parents, uh, their, their child engage into sex, but they, they don't want to agree with it. You'll uh, utakuja kuwa na matokeo baadaye mm -hmm. instead of kumwambia wewe kuengage kwa sex mm -hmm. itakuja kukuletea problem hivi na hivi or like sitting you, down and just yeah, explaining yeah, and to, explain them, the to them so you, you'll find a lot of parent ni zile tu anakuambia wewe masi hii Kenya unafanya utakuja tu uone matokeo baadaye so talking to them uja unajua hujamsaidia hapo yeah so do you feel like there's that taboo from yeah. also from our parents yeah, yeah, whereby yeah. they feel uncomfortable having the sexual yeah, education sexually, yeah, yeah. sexual education to the kids yeah that is one of the challenges we are facing like now um, like me i have a daughter we sit down we talk about uh, uh, sexual education vitu kwa hizo ninamwambia you can get into sex hivi na hivi ni zile vitu utapata unampatia mfano unaangalia mtu fulani rafiki yako hivi na hivi so hiyo ndio the key thing ile tu tuna, tuna most of the parent wanajaribu kwa avoid mtu yeye ameengage kwa sex ama ukipata mtu yeye amesimama na kijana you need to talk to him una yani na na njia ile ina stahili mm. but wewe unaanza tu na quarreling fujo wewe umeanza umalaya nini vitu kai hizo so hizo ndio zile mtoto saa unajua the more una keep kumtukana na nini so nataka kuja kujua hii kitu natukaniwa ni nini so okay. so hizo ndio zile challenge alafu utapata watu kama eh, sana sana ina kwa sisi men a lot of men akisikia tu mtoto wake labda alionekana na mtu fulani hataki kujua anakuja tu pale na start beating vitu kama hizo mm -hmm. na watu wasiku hizi unapata wapigwi unaongelesha tu mm -hmm. unaonesha hii ndio the right direction ukitaka ku follow hii utapata matunda yake ni na ukifollow education utakuja kupata matunda yake ni so you know one of the key thing ile tuna face na a lot of parent venye nasema wako busy unatoka morning mm -hmm. unarudi evening utaki kujua ule mtu wako alipatiwa homo kama ule mtu wako alishindaje mm -hmm. so unapata hiyo time ya covid 19 hiyo nine months watu wao walikuwa home mm -hmm. mzazi you are too busy kuenda kutafuta chakula kuja kulipa hao vitu kama hizo unaona uki provide ile kitu hizo zote unaona um, uko mtoto wako uko sawa yeah okay. that's all na unakusahau ile the love so wale watu wao wanakosa ile love pale kukaa kuongea na wao eh umeendeleaje umefanya homework zako vitu kama hizo mm -hmm. ama siku yako imekuaje so hizo ndo zile challenge tunapata like unapata a parent can anaweza baia mtu wake phone lakini they don't communicate so una una, una, una shangaa huyo hiyo phone umembaia utamwachia ukiangalia kwenda kwa message zake utapata ana communicate na maboys marafiki wa sichana labda ni bad uh, group vitu kama hizo so hizo ndo zile challenge we are trying to talking even to the parents because in our program we have uh, after every quarterly year tunaita wale parents tuongeleshe tunataka kujua relationship yako na ule mtu wako ni aje so hizo ndo zile key thing tuna need ku factor because mimi naweza sema inamaanisha walimu they were playing a big role because uh, tem covid haikuwa mtu yeye akienda shule mwalimu akiona tu mtoto msichana hivi atajua there is something wrong mm -hmm. it's either an menstruate mood zime change eh, or maybe kuna something wrong na inaweza kuja kupata labda ni, ni mimba mm -hmm. lakini wazazi wetu they, they come to realize mtoto akona mimba after 5 months 
after four, five, six months. Wengine mm -hmm. ata unakuja kupata ati anakuja kushia kwa mtoto. Because you're not always there. Yeah. Okay, got it. Now from the angle, you mentioned uh, uh, in a situation where a parent can find their daughter standing with a gentleman, a young mm. man, and they will be all aggressive without just finding out and just sitting down with your child and just talking to them. Do you involved, uh, is the boy child involved in this conversation? Because I believe it's also important on the other end, because yeah, yeah. it takes two to tangle, yeah, yeah. Uh, from the aspect of just understanding that uh, a young, or even a lady's body is not for you to for yours to take. So uh, do you engage also to read the boy child? Yeah, we also engage because uh, one thing I know that uh, there is no boy child without girl child. Yes. And there is no girl child without boy child. Mm -hmm. So we also do the, the boy child uh, mentorship program and uh, try to talk to the boys and try to show them, are you ready maybe to be a father at 15 years? Are you ready to be a father on 16 years? Mm -hmm. So that is one of the key thing we are trying but uh, we still have that difficulty boys dealing with them is not that easy because I'm also a boy so like for us a, a mentorship program for boys you cannot do it uh, on an every weekend mm -hmm. you can try to do it but you will find that challenge so for us we have a mentorship program for boys for, uh, for every month we do a two session for those boys at least talk to them uh, we engage them in different ways uh, through sports, uh, maybe through playing uh, PlayStation, things like that, at least uh, to show them uh, the importance of a, a, a girl so that the boy child, when he sees the, a girl, he can see a girl like a sister to her. In a respectful yeah, way. In a respectful way. So that is the, one of the things that uh, we are trying to help. But it is not that easy mm -hmm. because during time of COVID-19, a lot of boys maybe who are in secondary, uh, they, 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 they engage in self in riding the border border. Mm -hmm. And uh, you ride the border border for a day, you, after finishing the day, you'll get, you, you, you're getting 500. So you'll find when the school were open, a lot of boys uh, refused to go back to school because of that 500 shillings. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to help them to show them uh, you can still go back to school. And after finishing school, you can come and ride your... Uh, border, border. All right. Uh, okay, Abdullah, as you wind up, I'd like to find out in terms of your funds, how do you raise them? And if, if anyone is watching, can they come as sponsors and how do they go about it? Uh, uh, through our funds, uh, one of the, through our funds, we, we just raise them from friends mm -hmm. and we don't have donors. Uh, we, uh, our donors, we just believe from friends. And uh, for now, like we, are, we have two different programs, uh, providing sanitary towels and providing diapers mm. because uh, for the young mothers uh, diapers have, come, have become basic need Very true. yeah yeah so on a on a through our funding we just do it uh, in our in our page okay, we are in facebook mm -hmm. we are in facebook we are in instagram yeah so that's how we we, we raise our, our funds maybe when we have a program want to do the diapers uh, program mm -hmm. so that's we post it our page there Mm -hmm. So m people can follow it and uh, and do their contribution there, okay. at least to help their girls. Fantastic. So where can they find you across all social media if they want to partner, donate, mm -hmm. and also interact you on uh, on a personal level as well? Okay, on a personal level, I, ha I have my own pay I have my own uh, Facebook account called. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Abdul Ali in the Facebook account, but very soon I will be opening my own page of uh, Mr. Pads, mm -hmm. at least uh, to try to help the girls and uh, people donate. For, uh, at least we can for funding for the, uh, the organization for the for the organization and uh, for the girls uh, 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 pads because uh, pads is a it's a it's, it's a, a continuous a process because uh, those girls need pads every it's month. It's a basic need. Actually. Yeah, it's a yeah. basic need every month. The girl needs uh, pads. So, but now you can find me on Facebook, Abdul Ali Hussein. And on our organization, you can find, find us in Kilta Touch the Needy. We are in Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. All right. Thank you very much, Abdul Ali Hussein, for creating time to be with us. We appreciate you a lot. And mm -hmm. continue with the great work that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that is Mr. Paz Abdul Ali Hussein, who is the co-founder of Kirita Touch the Needy. Make sure you follow them across all their social media handles. That is Kirita Touch the Needy. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social media platform at Y254 channel. Is where you can find us across all our social. We'll be right back with so much on Why in the Morning.